Thank you. Good morning, everybody. It's uh, great to be with everyone. I appreciate the organizers who helped to sponsor today, SA and DSA. Thanks for uh, inviting me to be part of this important discussion about how we move forward and resist. And it's an urgent question that was really driven home for me about how urgent it was the day after the election. Because that day, uh, a young Muslim girl came to school at my son's elementary school, and she hadn't yet heard the news about who won the election. And as she was hanging up her backpack on the hook, she just dropped to the ground in tears, sobbing and pounding her fists into the carpet. She was terrified and traumatized that she could be split apart from her family, that she could be targeted for hate crimes. And that was an incredible moment because it was a real choice for my son's te teacher at that point. And I'm proud to say that she was wearing this very shirt, Black Lives Matter, at school. And she didn't let that, that girl suffer in silence, that she went up to her and picked her up and canceled the lessons for the day and said, we are going to actually get all the classes together at the grade level and hold a class discussion with the families that are there for drop off. And we're gonna say, we have your back. Muslims are welcome at, at this school and we're gonna support you uh, and, and be behind you. This is a sanctuary campus. And that was a beautiful, um, it's a beautiful, uh, piece of resistance that I think we need to see uh, pushed around Seattle to turn our schools into sites of, of resistance to everything that Trump stands for. Because he proudly and boldly proclaims his bigotry on everything he owns, his name that's synonymous with sexual assault, his name that's synonymous uh, with xenophobia and homophobia and racism, right? He puts that, that Trump name on the Trump Towers and the hotel and the Trump golf course and the fake Trump University. Um, and I think it's time we publicly declare our opposition, right, on the school reader boards across Seattle that we say immigrants are welcome here, that we say LGBTQ youth are welcome here and your families will be supported, that we say black lives matter in this school, right? And, and that's a, a movement that is, is already underway and really we have to redouble our efforts because the bipartisan attack on public education that continued uh, from Bush to Obama where we saw the intellectual process and the emotional process of teaching and learning being redu reduced to a single test score in order to label schools failing, in order to privatize them. Right? And now we're seeing the acceleration of that under Betsy DeVos and under the, the Trump administration that has recently decided to promote a $54 billion increase in military spending and yet cut public education by $9.3 billion. That, that is a travesty. That's a disgrace in our country. And it's something that we have to actively organize uh, resistance to. And I believe we have to resist in every possible way we can. When we have progressive, radical, independent, not of the two parties of capitalism, uh, not the Democrats or Republicans, but when we have truly radical uh, campaigns that we can get behind, like, like Nikita, like Shama, like John, we should be out there supporting those as one of the, the most effective ways to, to uh, put forward uh, socialist ideas and radical politics out into the public. We should be out in the streets and the demonstrations agitating um, and, and fighting back. We should bring resistance into our lesson plans in the classroom, right, and teach critical thinking against this rote memorization and standardization. We should fight on every front we can, but I'll tell you this, I think there's one front that we have to have a laser-like focus on because the, the idea of workplace organization, of actually building a fighting labor movement and organizing where you work, 
I think is actually the, the place where we actually have the most power. And I, and I, I want to make that argument because I think it's actually counterintuitive in a lot of ways. Because at work, you have a boss that tells you what to do, and that's a difficult situation, right? And, at, and, and as well, right, who in here learned about the labor movement in their history class? Unless you're in a few of our, our history classes, right? That's a, that's a history that, that is erased. In the mainstream media, they tell you that politics is synonymous with the ballot box, that what politics is is going and voting, right? They don't talk about the, the black power movement, the civil rights movement, the Chicano power movement, uh, the labor movement as politics, right? And so, so those social movements and workplace struggles get erased from the public consciousness as part of uh, the most effective way to struggle. But I want to suggest to you today that the power we have at the workplace is the power we have to shut this system down and reopen it under our management democratically to control. And I, I don't just say that as abstract propaganda, I say that both from my historical understanding and I say that from my concrete practice. So I want to take us back to 2013 at Garfield High School where I helped to organize the MAP test boycott where all of my colleagues voted unanimously to refuse to administer a standardized test that was degrading our students, especially our English language learners, our immigrant students, our special education students. And the entire faculty refused to do that test. We were met with a 10-day suspension without pay threat by the superintendent, but that wasn't carried out because uh, we had the power uh, of labor, and it was the social equality educators that spread it to seven other schools around Seattle and kept us safe. I just want to wrap up by saying that you know, we then took that struggle, the social equality educators, to have Black Lives Matter at School Day, where we saw that labor struggle wasn't just about economic issues, but we had to take up fights against racism and oppression as well. And 3,000 teachers went into the classrooms wearing this shirt to value our black kids, and hundreds of them taught lessons against racism and institutional racism in the schools. <laughs> and finally, thank you. And finally, you know, we were recently pushing for a May Day strike to go out against this legislature that refuses to fully fund education. We, because of undermining of that vote, there was mass sentiment to strike on that day, but because of undermining of that vote, we, we, we did lose that vote. I'm sad to say, but I'm very proud to say that hundreds upon hundreds of educators voted uh, to strike on May Day, and even if we don't walk out that day, we will be holding solidarity campaigns. Students are organizing to walk out that day, and it's going to be another uh, show of the power of labor. And I'll just end by saying that, that I think that we do all the work, and when we engage in workplace struggle and labor movement struggle that unites with social movements, we find out that the billionaire class that that, that the 1% in this nation, they, we find out a secret. They need us, right? They need us to teach the kids, to heal the sick, to make the products, to distribute the products, but we have no need of them at all, and we can actually run this system for ourselves. <laughs>